Remember to subscribe and hit the notification button to keep up to date with our latest videos. So the F90 BMW M5 might just be the most well-rounded car on the market today. And we're here to tell you guys exactly why that is. So with a near 600 horsepower bi-turbo V8, 4.4 liter under the hood, uh, this thing is quite the monster. Uh, we're gonna take it for a drive today. It's not often I get to drive an M car, and in fact, I've only driven kind of the newer, more modern M5s before. So I've driven a manual transmission V10 M5, I drove an F10 M5 that was slightly modified and tuned, had a bunch of power, and then this, finally, the F90 M5. Okay, so this is a 2018 model, the first year of the F90 M5. <sighs> <laughs> I've already got to catch my breath, you guys. It is absolutely ridiculous how fast this car is and how well BMW has managed to mask the, you know, 4,200 pounds that this car weighs. Now, this BMW M5 is the first M5 in history with all-wheel drive, and even with that X-Drive all-wheel drive system, it is much lighter than the outgoing F10 M5. I don't know how BMW managed to do that, so a little bit more carbon fiber around, a little bit more aluminum. Basically, all the suspension components are aluminum. Everything's aluminum stamped M. It is very specific to the M5, uh, and thus you have a true ultimate driving experience. Now, it's been a while since I have been in an M5. It's been about eight months since I drove that F10. Uh, but this is an all new generation. I mean, they, they've revamped. I mean, they completely revamped this car from the ground up. It does have the same 4.4 liter twin turbo V8 under the hood, uh, but it is making a little bit more power. Now, the torque curve is monstrous in this car, and I'll demonstrate, I'll show you a shot of the Speedo, but if you look at a dyno graph, the torque curve like boosts up incredibly quick because of those turbos, and then it's basically flat for the entirety of the rev range, so you have monstrous torque. It is a very well-rounded engine, a very smooth engine, very predictable engine, and it is paired with this marvelously tuned ZF eight-speed gearbox. So out with the dual clutch from that F10 M5 uh, is the first M5 with a traditional uh, torque converter automatic. But here's the thing, don't let that scare you away. Don't click away yet, okay? A torque converter automatic is not all that bad, uh, especially in this car because it's tuned by BMW. It's tuned by the guys over at M and it's incredibly responsive. If nobody had told me this was a torque converter, I would have thought it was a dual clutch. Now, it is not quite as quick as, let's say, a PDK. It's just a hair slower, it's not quite there, but pretty much just as responsive. I mean, it is brilliant. When I say brilliant, it really is. It is it's very seamless, paired very nicely, uh, with this V8, it's a monstrous car. Now, the BMW M5 doesn't look obnoxious from the outside. You could argue that like an STI, I mean, you don't even have to argue, but like an STI or a Type R Civic is way more aggressive looking and just gaudy from the outside. It's, you know, it's very shouty, whereas, let me catch 
catch my breath here for a second. <laughs> <laughs> 16 kilometers an hour way too quickly this thing is a monster this thing is so fast one of the fastest cars I think I've ever driven one of the fastest modern cars I've definitely ever driven I mean aside from a 720s or a gt3 rs this is this is up there so the car does weigh quite a bit uh, it's somewhere in in between 42 and 4300 pounds I believe but again like I said it is almost 100 pounds lighter than the previous model. So BMW is doing a little bit to mask the weight. Or not mask the weight, I guess, but to kind of lower the weight where they can in a car like this. So what I think the M5 is good at, and it's pretty much one of the best automobiles on the market at doing this, is combining a sports car driving experience with a luxury driving experience. So what you get is you don't get quite as luxury of a feel on the interior as you do in an AMG car. Just throwing that out there. In like a brand new, equivalently priced, you know, S-Class or E-Class, you're going to get a little bit more luxuries on the inside. Maybe not in terms of features, but in terms of the overall just general feel you get the moment you sit in the car. But the BMW is a little more tuned towards the edgy kind of sporty hardcore driving feel. So the suspension, I mean, we have everything in Sport Plus right now. Uh, so the suspension is a little bit stiff. It's not, it's not like floaty and cushy, but you know, it's really nice. It's quiet. It's very quiet, almost too quiet. <laughs> we have the exhaust open. There is a button down here uh, for the exhaust. There's also three buttons for your different drive modes. So so much to go over <laughs> in this car but uh, you see these big two M buttons on the steering wheel here so what you have is M1 and M2 and what you can do is you can program these separately to be two different driving settings depending on what you want so for the left button let's say you could put the steering in comfort you could have the exhaust on you could have the suspension in sport and then the steering in sport plus maybe and then in M2 you could do everything flat out sport plus traction control off and just have an all-out monster so at a button at a touch of a button you can uh, have the car drive exactly how you want once you go through the menus and change all your settings which I'll have to admit does take a little bit of time and is definitely quite the learning curve to go through all of those menus and choose the settings you want uh, that being said, once you have the car driving how you would like, and the options how you would like, <laughs> it'll blow your mind. This car is, there's so much to take in here. The first thing is obviously how fast this car is. It is incredibly fast. Zero to 60 happens, I believe, in about 3.3 seconds, faster than a lot of modern day supercars. And now that is thanks in large part to the xDrive all wheel drive system. Now what's very cool, yes, this is the first M5 with all wheel drive. And you might think, Marcus, a torque converter automatic and all wheel drive in a huge, big, heavy M5, you can hardly call that an M5 anymore. And I would agree with you in principle, but the all wheel drive system is really cool because in Sport Plus, you can set it so the all wheel drive system sends about 70% of the torque to the rear and 30% to the front. And then you can actually decouple the twin clutch differential in the front and it sends all the power to the rear and it effectively becomes a rear wheel drive drift monster. So the option is still there. So you can't really complain. I mean, it's lighter than the outgoing model, yet it still has all wheel drive when you want it in the winter, if you want to throw snow tires on, but you can switch to rear wheel drive and do burnouts all day long. And you've got like 553 pound feet of torque. Uh, <laughs> and I'm sure, by the way, those numbers from BMW are very modest. I'm, I'm sure if you put this on a dyno, you're making closer to 550 to 600 wheel horsepower. Definitely feels like that. Full throttle. 100, 130, 140. <laughs> it's, it masks the speed so well. You really gotta be watching the speed. I mean, you really get pushed back in the seat hard, but there is no drop off in torque. There's no delay in torque in between gears. 
The shifts are seamless. So, I mean, you're powering through. This is an Autobahn car through and through. This is the definition of an Autobahn car here in 2019. And I really think the BMW has nailed it. This is such a leap from the F10. And I know a lot of M enthusiasts and, you know, just luxury sports sedan drivers in the world were kind of disappointed when the F10 came out. And I can't blame them. Very fast car. I think this looks a lot better. And I think this real... And I think this car really now feels like a true next generation M5. It really does. Uh, this does not have a few options. You can actually option this car for, I think, $8,500 for carbon ceramic brakes. But be wary, the carbon ceramic brakes cost about $20,000 to replace uh, pads and rotors. So uh, <laughs> just be ready for that if you are going to track this car. Uh, the owner of this car does actually track the car, which is really cool. So he's got the steel brakes and a few other options that he did not go for, uh, such as the like driver assist package, all the safety stuff that you really don't need. <laughs> uh, we have option the Bowers & Wilkins stereo system, which is pretty much a must have in an executive sedan like this, I would say. There's leather everywhere. You're paying for this though. This is a very expensive car. This is well over $100,000 brand new. Uh, and for a lot of cars over $100,000, especially that aren't supercars, it's hard to justify the price a lot of the time, but BMW has really nailed it. I love the HVAC in this car. Normally I'm not a big fan of digital HVAC controls, but it's very separated from that infotainment system. And it's not like duplicated on the infotainment system. So it makes it very easy uh, and quick to adjust all your fans. It's very responsive. I really like it. It's a very nice place to be. There's just enough carbon fiber, not too much though. There's just enough gloss black, not too much though. The F90 M5 has got to be one of the most well-rounded vehicles on the market today. It combines jaw-dropping power uh, I was going to say ear shattering noise, but it does not have that. With the abundance of luxury on the inside and a very executive look from the outside without looking too, too gaudy, too out there, you know, it, it, the styling is very conservative with this M5, yet it still looks better than the outgoing F10. So I think BMW has largely improved this car. And the only thing on paper that you might say that they haven't improved is going from a dual clutch transmission. To a torque converter auto but this zf with bmw m tuning is really something else i it's just as good as the outgoing dual clutch in my in my mind steering gets kind of artificially heavier if you do go in sport plus i mean honestly you guys there's not many stretches of road public road that you can ring this car out on. I mean, you get through first, second, third, fourth gears and uh, you're already breaking every speed limit in the country. Wow. <laughs> and the brakes are solid. Brake feel is really, really good. It's a lot of confidence here. Almost too much confidence. Oh, but there's so much grip. There is so much grip. And you know what? The steering's direct. The steering's direct. There's not much feel, honestly. Like, it's kind of artificial feeling, the steering, but it is incredibly direct and it does get a little bit heavier when you do put it in Sport Plus. Wow. It's breathtaking. It would, if I own this car, I would be going full throttle everywhere I went. It's impossible. It just eggs you on. Like, the turbos spool up incredibly fast even though the turbos are a little bit bigger actually compared to the twin turbos on the F10 M5. Uh, they're tuned slightly different, but you know, it is very much the same S63 uh, V8 under the hood. Great sounding V8, I would imagine, if you actually uncorked it fully. Like even just staying in sixth gear, you don't even have to shift up. Effortless, effortless jaw dropping speed. This thing is an absolute monster. An absolute monster through and through. 
a complete package in M car that you will not be disappointed with. Even if you don't have a few of the little minor options uh, that like haven't been optioned here, for instance, this car is gonna blow you away. You will not be disappointed. Sure, it's a little big, but when you're behind the wheel, you can see the hood. You can very accurately predict where the front of the car is. You have this insane wraparound 360 view on the screen here that gives you, you know, plenty of space when you need to park and everything. Wireless charging, obviously. It's, I mean, this thing's fully loaded. It's, I do wish it was louder though. I really do. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, you're watching Roads Untraveled. My name is Marcus. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out our store, shop.roadsandtravel.com. We've got engine code jet tags, a bunch of new designs up there, uh, some M engines, uh, some other JDM engines as well. If you guys want, follow me on Instagram at Roads Untraveled. If you want to check out any uh, behind the scenes stuff like that, we'll see you guys next time.